<laughs> I don't think I need to introduce her any more than that, by the way. So I was it? Anyway, I'm going to hold her mic for her. Over to you, John. Thank you, Marion, and uh, thank you for everyone who's come out today. Um, I'm here today because Westminster finished yesterday, thank God. And um, I'm here today to support my SNP MSP colleagues who share my deep reservations about the system of self-identification that would be imposed by this bill. But I'm also here to support all the brave women and men who've dared to express their heartfelt, rational and genuine concerns about the unintended consequences of this legislation. I am not a transphobe and I'm not a bigot. I'm a human rights lawyer who knows that human rights are universal and that sometimes rights conflict and when that happens we have to have a civilised discussion about how we all rub along together. I believe in equal rights for everyone. It would be pretty surprising if I didn't as a lesbian and as a feminist. And unlike some of those virtue signalling in the building behind us, I have a proven tracker, track record professionally as a lawyer and in my public life as an activist standing up for equal rights. When I, when I was a bit younger than I am now, I fought against the homophobia of Section 28, while some of the leading politicians in the building behind me were sitting on the fence. So, I will take no lectures about equality or human rights. It has been said repeatedly, including by the First Minister, that this bill gives no new rights to trans people. And she's actually right about that. What the bill does is it gives new rights to everyone so that anyone can self-identify into the opposite sex with minimal safeguards. And what we, those of us who've worked with the survivors of sex abuse and violent abuse know that some predatory men will take advantage of this to get access to vulnerable women. Now, the Scottish National Party, of which I am a member, our manifesto for the elections last year promised to reform the Gender Recognition Act so that it would make it easier for trans people to get a gender recognition certificate. And I don't have a difficulty with that. My difficulty is with legislation which allows anyone yeah. to self-identify yeah. into the yeah. opposite category. Yeah. And my particular difficulty is because of insufficient safeguards. Yeah. Now, like many of you, I was dismayed and appalled last night when amendments designed to prevent rapists and sexual predators from having access to self-ID were defeated in the building behind me. How can that be? clear is that for me, like a lot of you in this crowd, this is a matter of conscience. And contrary to popular opinion, I'm not actually a rebel. I'm just a politician who believes in evidence-based policy making, free speech and universal human rights. And I, care, I care passionately about my party the Scottish National Party, and I'm proud of that some of the ideas I've championed over the years have become SNP party policy. I'm proud that I was one of the leading voices against Brexit. I'm proud that I led the fight to stop Boris Johnson's unlawful prorogation of Parliament. Yeah. And I'm also, I'm also proud uh, that I championed the need for a plan B if uh, the Tories referred a, uh, refused a Section 30 order for another referendum. But I can't support this bill because my party has never voted at conference for a system of self-identification and it is not what was promised in the manifesto. Now, 
like many of you, I listened to the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Violence Against Women and Girls give her evidence to the committee on Monday evening. And I very much agreed with her when she said that this is not about culture wars, it's about bad legislation. Yeah. Last week's court judgment by Lady Haldane made it very clear that this legislation will impact on the rights of women and it will also impact on lesbian and gay people and the rights of women and the rights of same-sex attracted people are protected in the Equality Act. So are the rights of transgender people and that's as it should be. But I repeat that sometimes, this is basic one law, basic undergraduate law, sometimes rights conflict and when they conflict we have to find a way to work it out so that no one group it triumphs. So I think we need a delay in this bill. And we, need, we need a delay to look at the implications of Lady Haldane's decision. We need a delay to properly consider what the UN Special Rapporteur on Violence Against Women and Girls said. And we also need a delay for the committee dealing with this bill to listen to the survivors of sexual violence who they've so far refused to listen to. Years ago, three and a half years ago, when I first became involved in this debate, a trans woman came to see me at my constituency surgery, and she and I discussed the situation and the, the unpleasantness that was seeping into the debate. And we wrote jointly to the Scottish Government suggesting that a citizens' assembly should be held to discuss how best to reform the Gender Recognition Act. Because we felt that that would be a forum where all voices could be heard and where some consensus could be achieved. Now, there's still time to do this. The Parliament behind me has passed the necessary legislation to hold citizens' assemblies, and I think that's what should be done if the legislation were to be paused. And what I would say to people in the building behind me and to my colleagues in the SNP is this. It's not a climb down to pause. It's not a climb down to make sure that this legislation works better for everyone. And it's not a climb down to acknowledge the serious problems thrown up by the legislation and to try to find a way to fix them. Scotland is not supposed to be a winner-takes-all, first-past-the-post, my-way-or-the-highway society. The, the opposition to this legislation across Scotland is deep, widespread and overwhelming. Forcing it through is not a show of strength, it's a show of weakness. But there's also, there's, also, there's also a wider issue at stake here, a wider issue than just the protection of women's rights and a wider issue than how we achieve equality and human rights for all. And it's about, the wider issue is about how we formulate policy and how we make law in Scotland and the way in which our public debate is conducted. Political leaders in the building behind me have sat on their hands while, while women have been abused, bullied and hounded from their jobs. And the reason they've been abused, bullied and hounded from their jobs is because they don't agree with extreme gender identity ideology. Some women have even faced the threat of criminal charges for speaking out. Last week, a mob prevented the showing of a film where feminists and lesbians talked about their struggle in the face of this ideology. And last night, in the building behind me, Decent, ordinary female citizens of this country were threatened with arrest in the public gallery. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to preach, but I'm nearly finished. <laughs> what, what I want to say about that is, this is not my Scotland. And this is not the Scotland I came into politics to create. Whether you are a nationalist or whether you're a unionist, we all want a better country. And the way to do that is to legislate well 
after a civilised debate in which all voices are heard and voices are not threatened and silenced by smears and threats. So I repeat, there is, there is still time, and I know the MSPs in the building behind us are going to be there for a while tonight, there's still time to reset the dial on this, and I'm calling for MSPs to do that. Not to vote the bill down, but to delay and go back to the drawing board. Yeah. Now, many of us here today are wearing the suffragette colours, and incidentally, those colours belong to all women. Yeah. And the, the, suffragette, the suffragettes used to say, courage calls to courage. And that courage has been shown by all of you here today and all the women and men who've dared to stand up against this bill and it should inspire us all. So what, what, I, what I really want to say before, before I, I, I stop speaking is this. Things look a bit dark today because the legislation looks like it's going to pass. But there is hope. And despite the lovely sunshine, it's not really surprising that things would look dark on the shortest day of the year. But from tomorrow, the days will get longer. Yes. And we will win this fight. Yes. And I, t I, t I, tell you why, I tell you why we're going to win it. The women's movement has been rejuvenated by this fight. Yes. So has the gay rights movement. Yes. Lesbians, like myself, gays and bisexual people who thought we were being erased from our own struggle and erased from our own history have found our voice again. Yeah. And there are many, there are many wonderful grassroots organisations like Four Women Scotland standing here beside me. Yeah. And like the the and like the LGB Alliance, which I'm proud to support. Yeah. And, and, here, and here's another reason to have some hope. Even if this bill passes, there will be women-only services in Scotland for the, for the survivors of domestic and sexual abuse, thanks to J.K. Rowling and Byron's case. And another, another really good thing that has come out of this struggle is that women have made common cause across party lines. And it, one of the things I really wanted to happen after the independence referendum, and obviously I was on the losing side, but particularly as a woman of the left, I wanted to be able to make common cause with my Labour Party sisters. Yeah. And I've been able to do that as a result <laughs> of this fight. And I have to just say I love my Labour sisters, and I'm proud to stand beside them. And uh, also, uh, much to my surprise, I've found that I've got more time than I thought I ever would have for some Tories. <laughs> so, with that cross-party support, we are going to fight on against this bill and we're going to continue to stand up against the bullies who've tried to silence us. And we're going to remember that we're not alone I can tell you that there are many parliamentarians in the SNP and many members and activists beyond those who've spoken out publicly who have serious concerns about this bill and I'm sure it's the same in the Labour Party. So we will fight on. This ideology may have captured powerful people in our country but it's not captured everyone and we can see from recent opinion polls that public opinion is on our side. Uh, many people who are better lawyers than I am think there are legal issues with this bill and I think the fight will not stop if it's passed tonight. Thanks very much. Yeah.